minutes though. Glory. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You know, for the past month now, uh, probably over a month now, we've been carving out some time during uh, our noonday, middays, at least throughout the week, to pray for and to just speak to those of you who are prophetic entrepreneurs, you're prophetic business owners, you're prophetic ministry leaders, and you're living in a current COVID world and you're preparing for a post-COVID world. And it's very important for you to know where exactly God is in all of this. I wanna decree and declare the word of the Lord over your life, over your business, over your ministry, over all of your entrepreneurial endeavors. Uh, if there's a business, a ministry, an idea, an invention, if there's a product or service that we've been unable to pray over for the last several weeks since we've been hosting these uh, noonday, midday lives, I want you to drop the name of that business, the name of that entrepreneurial endeavor, the name of that ministry. I want you to drop it in the comments. We want to come into agreement with you today. I want to decree and declare the word of the Lord over your life and over the life of your business, over the life of your ministry. There could not be a better time in history. There could not be a better time in the history of your life. There could not be a better time in the history of whatever it is you believe God has anointed and assigned you to do. It couldn't be a better time for you to manifest uh, that product, that service, that idea, that invention, and introduce it to the marketplace. For those of you that have been trying to find where you where you fit in uh, this this ecosystem of of a, of a current COVID world, uh, I want to agree with you by faith that God's giving you the revelation. God's gonna give you the insight. God's gonna give you the vision. God's gonna give you the divine data. We're praying for Breon Wilson Charters Incorporated. We decree and declare the blessing of the Lord upon Breon Wilson Charters Incorporated. May the hand of the Lord be upon that business. May the manifestation of the miracle working power of God begin to flow in the direction of that business in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare that it ain't no drought. We decree and declare that it ain't no lack. We decree and declare that it ain't no famine for your business, but the hand of the Lord is moving and ministering to your business. I decree and declare favor over your business, over your entrepreneurial endeavor. May the hand of the Lord rest upon what God has called you to do. 
So many of you got ideas. So many of you got dreams. And your dreams and your ideas are so big, you, you got to understand that they can't be that big if the hand of God is not on them. They, they can't be that broad if God's uh, uh, not in them. And, and it's your responsibility to take those things and introduce them to the world. Introduce them to the marketplace. Luke 19 and 13, may that be your portion today. On this seventh day of July, of this seventh month, may Luke 19, 13 be your portion. May you take the talent that God has given to you. May you take the skill set that God has given to you. May you take the idea and the dream and the passion and the ambition and aspiration that God has given to you. And may you occupy till he comes. May God open doors of occupation for you. May you find unoccupied spaces in all these overoccupied spaces to take what God has given to you, the best of you, and introduce it to the world. Today, I decree and declare supernatural doors are going to open for you. I decree and declare today supernatural miracle signs and wonders are going to flow to you. I decree and declare today that there are going to be some exchanges made in your business in your ministry, in your entrepreneurial endeavors, with the products and services that God has given to you. We prophesy life over it right now in the name of Jesus. If you feel discouraged, if you feel disappointed, if you feel uh, 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 up, uh, you know, just frustrated and you feel like you're not gaining grounds and you ain't got no momentum. We challenge you in the name of Jesus to rise up to another frequency. Don't let what you see going on around you stop you from moving forward. If God is giving you a business, if God is giving you a ministry, if God is giving you an idea, if God has given you a dream and a desire to be the financer, the breadwinner for your family, for your children, for your community, for your culture, for your generation. That means he has already made provision for you. He has already uh, designated resources for you. It's your responsibility to rise up and to take the gift of you, to take the talent of you, to take the skill set of you, to take the business of you, the ministry of you, the brand of you, and introduce it to the marketplace. And sometimes you got to press past all of the rejection. Sometimes you got to press past, ain't sometimes almost all the time you got to press past that rejection you got to press past people ignoring you you got to press past people not responding to you because once you press past that resistance you're going to experience breakthrough i decree and declare supernatural strength to come upon you today in the name of jesus may the hand of the lord rest upon everything that god has given to you uh johansi west we pray for palmetto financial and credit restoration services May the hand of the Lord rest upon it. May supernatural doors open for it. May there be supernatural resources and provision and exchanges and clients and customers that manifest and gravitate to you in the name of Jesus. May there be supernatural exchanges created for you today on this seventh day of July. 7-7, seven, seven, that's double completion. May God complete the work that he began in you in your business, in your dreams, in your desires, in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare over every one of you that God has given all these ideas and all these dreams and uh, desires and these passions and aspirations. May the hand of the Lord rest upon you. May divine data be given to you. May infinite intelligence be released to you. May you begin to get revelation and strategies and methods on how to navigate through even this current COVID world that we're living in today. It might look like that it's a drought in the world. It might look like uh, that there's scarcity in the world. It might look like uh, that, that there, there's a lack of resources in the world, but the truth is it's abundance out there. There are blessings out there. There are opportunities out there, but you got to be willing to lean into it. Michelle Jacob, I'm praying for you right now. Whatever it is that you're dealing with, whatever it is that you're going through, whatever the storm is, we speak life to you. We speak life to your mind. We speak life to your body. We speak life to your finances. We speak life to your family. We decree and declare that the hand of the Lord is upon you. No weapon formed against you, Michelle, will be able to prosper. We bind and break, cancel and curse every demonic attack over your life. We decree and declare that a head of hedge of protection is surrounding you. 
I place a supernatural demand for there to be an elevation of revelation released upon you and may that revelation activate you. May that revelation accelerate you into a place of peace, into a place of prosperity, into a place of progression. We break you out of whatever the storm is. In the name of Jesus, Felicia, we're praying for divine credit solutions and divine housing provision. May the hand of the Lord rest upon that business and those businesses. May there be supernatural resources and provision released to you. May God give you what you need for that mission, for that mandate. We decree and declare it right now in the name of Jesus. We command the earth to yield forth fruit for you. In Jesus' name, we release that anointing upon you. Ladies and gentlemen, there is so much abundance in this world for those of you that are prophetic entrepreneurs. For those of you <clears throat> that are prophetic business owners, <clears throat> for those of you that are prophetic ministry leaders, when I came out of prayer today, I started sharing with my wife early this morning, actually, that I feel that thing right there. When I came out of prayer today and I started sharing with what the Lord was dealing with me about in prayer just this morning I started showing her how all of what we see going on after over three months of a quarantine after over three months of this virus and this pandemic reaching its height that they have pressed uh, the, 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 the reset button again and they're, and they're now talking about a second wave and I told my wife that I believe this is happening because God's hand is on his people and God is not satisfied with where we are just yet. He's putting us in another prophetic position to pivot even more so that we can lean in with what God has given to us. This is why for over a month now, at this noonday, during this midday moment, I've been coming on here ministering to you, praying for you, prophesying over your entrepreneurship, over your business ownership, over your ministry leadership, because you gotta lean in. You cannot post on social media enough. You cannot share the vision that God has given to you enough. You cannot promote your business enough. You cannot market yourself enough. The business of you, the brand of you, the ministry of you, the entrepreneurship of you, the idea of you, the skill set of you, the talent of you, the blessing of you, the benefit of you has to be introduced to the world. I truly believe that this is one of the spiritual reasons why we see a return or another cycle or wave of what's going on from a spiritual perspective is giving you and I an even greater opportunity to lean in even more, to push in even harder, to be 1 Corinthians 15, 58, steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Why? Because we know that our labor in the Lord is not in vain. Some of you are being overwhelmed right now by discouragement because people are not really responding the way they should respond. The market is not gravitating to you the way you anticipated the market to gravitate to you. But all that means is that you've got to press. You've got to press. Forget those things which are behind. You got to press because you are spiritually an essential worker. You have value inside of you and there's a world out there that needs what God has given to you. I place a supernatural demand on you in the name of Jesus that you are not going to be quiet. You're not going to be silenced. You're not going to be shut down. You're not going to be suffocated, but you're going to you're going to be bold. You're going to be bright. You're going to become louder with what it is that God has given to you in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare it right now. May all the apprehensions that you have had, may all the reluctancy that you have had, may all the fear that you have had, may it dissipate now in the name of Jesus. Somebody's getting ready to score a big win today. I'm telling you. Whoo, glory. Shata. I want you to receive that right now. I want you to speak that out of your mouth right now. Say today, this is 7720. This is the seventh day of the seventh month. This is a rainy season. I want you to decree that out of your mouth. Today, I'm going to score a big win. 
Your business is going to score a big win. Your ministry is going to score a big win. Your endeavors are going to score big wins. Your exchanges are going to create a big win. There's going to be a big door open for you. There's going to be a big approval. There's going to be a big yes. There's going to be a big opportunity. There's going to be a big connection. I decree it. I declare it. I prophesy it over your life right now in the name of Jesus. God is lifting somebody out of that discouragement. There's been a dark cloud hovering over everything you've been called to do. There's been a dark cloud hovering over your ideas and your dreams and your vision and your business and your operation. But God says there's rain in that cloud. There's rain in that cloud. May the rain flow from that cloud. What looks like is darkness. What looks like is defeat. What looks like is an overwhelming discouragement is going to be a downpour, a downpour, a downpour. May the rain of God pour on your products, your services, your business, your finances, your bank accounts, your credit. I decree and declare that right now in the name of Jesus. May the revelation of God plant you in the spirit realm. I'm interceding for you today. May divine intelligence be released upon you. May the infinite wisdom of God come upon you today. Look at that. Look at that. It's raining out there. Look at that. Ooh. Ooh. May the Holy Ghost speak to you in the rain. Holy Ghost, speak to your people. May every drop of revelation, may every drop of God's promise, may every drop of God's dreams, may every drop of God's revelation, may every drop of God's anointing, may it fall upon you today. See, there's a lot of people that might be talking about you. There are a lot of people that might be hating on you. There are a lot of people that might be coming against you. But this is a prophet that's prophesying over you because the reign of God is coming upon your business. The reign of God is coming upon every bank account. The reign of God is coming upon all three credit bureau credit reports. The reign of God is coming upon every approval. The reign of God is coming upon every relationship. I decree and declare divine business relationships. I decree and declare supernatural clients and customers coming from the north, south. Rain, Holy Ghost, rain, rain. Rain, Oda Shanda, Rain. Some of you have been stuck. You've been suspended. You ain't been making the moves that you know God gave you to make. May God shift your spirit and gear. May He shift your spirit and gear. May the rain of the Holy Ghost shift you in gear today. In the name In the name of Jesus. Rain on your people today. Rain on your people today. I'm prophesying a big win for somebody today. I'm prophesying a big win for somebody today. You are not suffering a loss today. You are not going to be defeated today. And I'm talking about in your finances. I'm talking about in your business. I'm talking about in your ministry. I'm talking about with that passion and that purpose, with those ambitions and aspirations that you have. You are not going to give up. You are not going to give in. The market may be wanting to suffocate you. People that's not responding to you may discourage you. Things that don't necessarily gravitate to you may damper your spirit. But you got to press past that. You got to push past that. You got to see the world for what it is. There is no scarcity in the world. There is no lack in this world. There is not a lack of money. There is not a lack of resources. There is not a lack of opportunities. There is not a lack of clients. There is not a lack of customers. It's not. It's not. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. I want you to speak that out of your mouth right now. Say, there is no lack for my finances. There is no lack for my business. There is no lack for my ministry. There is no lack. There is no lack. There is no lack. No, it isn't. 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 Your business is needed. Your business is essential. 
Your products and services are needed. They are essential. And the fact that you are a prophetic entrepreneur, the fact that you are a prophetic business owner, the fact that you are a prophetic ministry leader heightens the awareness of the world that needs what you have. It carries weight with it. You are prophetic because you hear from God. You are prophetic because you are able to pivot when God tells you to pivot. You are prophetic because you are able to provide divine solutions and strategies. You bring the blessing with you, not just the product. You bring the blessing with you, not just the service. You bring an anointing with you, not just a product and service. You bring power with you. You bring supernatural acceleration with you. There are going to be people who are going to begin to testify this month that because they connected with you, because they came into contact with you, because they gravitated to you, that something shifted in their lives, something shifted in their finances, something shifted in their ministry, something shifted in their business. You're going to hear those testimonies in the month of July, in the month of August, in the month of September. God is anointing you. Oh, glory. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And what has been seeming like it's been a delay. What's been seeming like it's been a deny. What's been seeming like it's been a pause. What's what's seeming like it's been a drought has only been prophetic preparation for you. God been preparing you. God been preparing you. God's been preparing you. God's been preparing you for such a season, for such a time, and for such a moment as this. You have been anointed by God. You have been assigned by God. You have been appointed by God to be raised up in 2020 as a prophetic entrepreneur because God knows he can trust you. You hear from him and you're willing to obey him. So that's why he can give you the provision. That's why he can give you the resources. But one of the natural reasons that we see taking place with this coronavirus and with this pandemic is because there's a spiritual undercurrent that God is using to infiltrate his will, to infiltrate his, his promise, to infiltrate his prophetic word so that he can get more to you. He can get more to you, but you've got to lean in. You've got to lean in. You've got to lean in. I want you to hear me in the spirit. You cannot talk enough about what God has anointed you to do. You cannot uh, 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 market enough. You cannot promote enough. You shanda. You cannot post enough. You cannot share enough. It's essential. It's essential. It's essential for you to share what God has given to you from his mind. The mind of God is on your brand. The mind of God is on your business. The mind of God is on your ministry. The mind of God is on your dreams. The mind of God is on your desires. The mind of God is on your inventions. The mind of God is on your products and your services. You got to lean in. Hey, Sha. Mando Sha Da Se De Be Kodo. Oh, God, I thank you today, right now, for every prophetic believer, for every prophetic entrepreneur, for every prophetic business owner that's listening to the words that are coming out of my mouth. I decree and declare today that they are scoring big wins, that today there's going to be supernatural testimonies, that today they're going to prove to you that they are not living in drought, that they are not living in lack that they ain't living in famine, but the rain of God is flowing. The rain of God is flowing. The rain of God is flowing. And they not going to be apprehensive about giving the world what you have given to them. They ain't going to be reluctant about giving the market what you have given to them. They They are going to lean into it in a way that they've never leaned into it before. I decree and I declare Luke 19 verse 13 over your life i decree and declare i decree and declare i'm gonna read it again for you i decree and declare luke 19 verse 13 over your life luke 19 verse 13 is your portion today luke 19 verse 13 is your portion today luke 19 verse 13 ida ba shanda ba sura ba haya shake it be sandobo shada ba ha Luke 19, verse 13, is your portion today. 
Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I want you to decree and declare that. Luke 19, verse 13 is your portion today. Here's what it says. And he called his ten servants, and he delivered them ten pounds. He delivered them ten pounds. One translation says that he gave them ten talents. He gave them ten talents. Here's what I want you to catch with this today, prophetic entrepreneurs, today, prophetic business owners, today, all of you prophetic ministry leaders. And I add prophetic to what I'm saying intentionally because the fact that you are prophetic in what it is that you do, the fact that you are prophetic in where you go, the fact that you have been called to be prophetic in ministry and in the marketplace, it heightens the awareness of the people you come into contact with because there's a different weight behind what you are introducing. There's a different vibe behind what you're introducing. But for you personally, as a prophetic entrepreneur, as a prophetic business owner, as a prophetic ministry leader, the fact that you are embracing and adopting this idea of being prophetic in ministry, being prophetic in business, it intensifies your ability. It expands your capacity, which means you cannot go with the normal mode of action. You can't be doing what everybody else is doing. And I'm showing you this in Luke chapter 19, verse 13. Because the, 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 the Lord, according to Luke 19, 13, has already given you, like in this parable, the nobleman gave the servants. God has already given you the talent. He's already given you the idea. Don't just look at talent as how good you are at something, but look at the talent as a gift that God has distributed to you. There's an idea. There's a dream. Think about it. You might not even think you know your purpose, but it's just some things you want to do in your life. It's certain things you want to do for your family. It's certain things you want to have for you and your family. It's certain things you want to do for your community, for your people, for your church, for your, for your culture, for your generation. And no matter how you try to deny it, no matter how you try to shake it off, it doesn't go anywhere. Every day you wake up, you still feel that unction to do this. You still have this dream and this desire to have this. Guess what? One of the reasons why you can't shake that idea, that dream, that passion, that desire is because God put it in you. When God puts something in you, you can't shake it. You can't make sense of it. You can't deny it. And no matter how far you try to run from it, you're going to always come back to it. That's the talent. That's the talent. Some of you watch this. Your greatest talent, oh my God, I want you to catch this be be before we bring this to, to, another, to another moment. I want you to catch this. Some of, your, some of you, your greatest talent is your ability to not give up. <laughs> oh my God, I want you to hear that. Some of you, your greatest talent is your ability to not fold. Your determination is a talent. Your ability to dream big is a talent. Your capacity to handle the weight and the pressure of whatever you go through and yet stay focused on where you're going to, that's a talent. No, you might not be the best ball player. No, you might not be able to contain information like some people. No, you might not have the articulation and the communication skills of others. Maybe you're not good with your hands. Maybe you're not good at math or calculations. Maybe you're not uh, the greatest philosopher. But guess what? When it comes to getting in it, whoo, glory. When it comes to staying in it, when it comes to being determined, when it comes to being uh, uh, passionate, you are talented in that. And so no matter what you attach that determination to, you always stay focused to get it done. So it doesn't matter if you're not as good as other people are. You've got to attach that talent, that ability that God has given to you, that, that insight, that drive, whatever that is, you got to attach it to some product, to some service to some idea, and you got to package it in a way that you can introduce it to the world. And when you introduce it to the world, I don't care how many times you hear no. I don't care how many times people pass you up. It doesn't matter who overlooks you. You got to continue to lean in. You got to continue to press in. 
I often tell the story, not just as an entrepreneur, but I often tell the story even as a minister. Back when God told me to plant the church that my wife now pastors, when God told me to plant the church, we didn't have social media. We didn't have the technology we have. The only thing I knew to do was to uh, develop flyers and to go around the apartment community and start knocking on doors. I wasn't concerned about who didn't want to come to church. I wasn't concerned about who was saying no. I wasn't concerned about getting cussed out. I wasn't concerned about people saying, don't bother me. I don't want you to come here. I'm knocking on doors. And guess what? As an entrepreneur, I do the same thing as I have for 18 years. I would rather knock on doors. I would rather hear a no. At least I'm hearing something. Getting a no from somebody is better than getting nothing from somebody. And that's leaning in. If you're not hearing enough no's, you ain't leaning in enough. If you ain't got enough people not responding to you, if you ain't got enough people rejecting you, if you ain't being disappointed on a regular basis, if you ain't scratching your head every three hours because nobody's returning your call, because people lying to you and avoiding you, you ain't leaning in enough. People should be so sick and tired of you that they blocking you on social media, that they blocking you on their phones, that they're no longer accepting your emails, that they're unsubscribing from your, from your newsletters, that's when you know you're leaning in. Because on the other side of that rejection, on the other side of those no's, on the other side of people not responding to you, is a world of people who need what you have. And this is the, ch this is the challenge. This is the test. For you to push past that, for you to push, push beyond that, and to press into that place of productivity. One of the spiritual reasons why we see another contraction, another fallback, another reset in the world is because enough of us as God's prophetic people have not risen to the occasion and leaned in. We got to be louder than the world. Woo, glory. We got to be louder than the market. And so Luke 19 verse 13, he says, he called his servants and he delivered them all talents. And notice what he said to them in verse 13, Luke 19. He said to them, occupy until I come. Occupy until I come. Some of you need to get that revelation today. You are not occupying until he shows up. One translation doesn't say occupy till I come. One translation says do business till I come. Do business till I come. So how do I do business? How do I occupy? Well, I find the market that matches what God has given to me. I find the market or the industry or the area that best fits my temperament, that best fits my dreams and my desires, that best fits my talent and my gift set. And I go into that market. Watch this. The market is going to be over-occupied. Very few markets are you going to find that are not over-occupied. So I'm not going to be sitting home twiddling my thumbs trying to conjure up the next best thing since sliced bread. Mm -mm. I'm just going to figure out how to introduce another loaf of bread. Everybody's selling bread, but who cares? They ain't got my loaf of bread. They ain't slicing it the way I'm slicing it. They're not packaging it the way I'm packaging it. They're not talking about it the way I'm talking about it. And so I don't have to necessarily come up with this genius golden idea like a Facebook or like a, a Uber or like a Twitter or like a IG. You and I most likely aren't going to be any of those anomalies. But guess what? You can be the best version of you and give the world the best of you. And watch this. All you have to do is enter into that over-occupied space <clears throat> and watch this. Find unoccupied pockets in that over-occupied space. He said, occupy until I come. Woo, glory. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So I'm going to get into that market. I'm going to stay into that market. My wife and I, we've been, we've been in entrepreneurship for 18 years now. Full-time entrepreneurs, okay? I want you to catch this. When God told us 
to go into the real estate industry. We already knew the real estate industry was over occupied. Everybody and their auntie a real estate agent. Everybody want to be real estate investors. Everybody think they the next best thing uh, uh, in real estate since sliced bread. But guess what? We don't care. We got a revelation from God. We got a word from God to go into the real estate arena. Now, guess what? Obviously, when we got into the real estate arena, we realized real quick that selling a house ain't going to be that easy. Okay? Uh, uh, buying a house for a customer ain't, ain't going to be that easy. None of this stuff that we see in real estate is going to be easy. So guess what we had to do? We had to go into an over-occupied space, and we had to occupy until the blessing showed up. That's Luke 19, verse 13. He said, occupy until I come. I'm going to stay in that lane until he show up or until the revelation shows up to give me an angle on where I need to pivot in this ecosystem that I know I have a desire to be in. So I didn't jump out of real estate and go find something else to do. My wife and I have been faithful. It's not that we haven't uh, 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 grown and develop other relationships in other areas or industries, but we've stayed true to our anointing. We've stayed true to our assignment. And so even today, the bread and butter of our lives is still real estate after 18 years. And we've been through a recession in 2008. But when we hit that recession, we leaned in. We didn't contract. We leaned in. And we sought God to get revelation on what was the angle we needed to find in order to pivot within that industry so that we wouldn't be casualties. And God gave us an angle. He gave us revelation. We pivoted, and guess what happened? It sustained us through that entire recession. And here we are again experiencing something very similar. So many of you are going to be where we were then. We, we were not... On the, on the level we, we all not. We wasn't where we at right now. So we were just getting started. We just planted a church uh, back in 2008 when the recession hit. We were just learning to get our business off the ground. And we had to pivot just to ride that thing out so that we wouldn't go under. So that we wouldn't uh, necessarily uh, bankrupt and lose everything and find another industry. Most of the people that we were doing business with in real estate, in investments, in flipping, in wholesaling, uh, brokers, mortgage lenders, a lot of them are no longer even in the business because they got out of it back then. Uh, a lot of that is because they didn't pivot. They didn't get a prophetic revelation and pivot. They just decided to make sense of why their time was up, their season was up, and they went into other fields. And I believe they missed a great opportunity to lean in, to pivot prophetically, and to get to their prophesied place with regard to that area that God called them to. Some of you are in the same place. You got to lean into it. It doesn't mean you ain't going to do other things. It don't mean there's not going to be other industries that God ain't going to introduce you to. But guess what? What it means is there's a lane, there's an angle that you have that you need to lean into and you need to give it all you got. And when I say give it all you got, you need to be the loudest. You need to be the brightest. You need to be the boldest. Everybody shot out of that bow soul. Everybody need to know that you there. Everybody need to know that you're there. And it ain't, it ain't nothing that you can do too much of when God has anointed you to do it. You got to see your business just like a preacher sees preaching. You got to see your entrepreneurial endeavors just like a minister sees his or her ministering. You ain't going to never talk to a preacher, a pastor, a minister, somebody that's been called to the gospel ministry, and they're going to tell you they're going to be quiet. They're going to tell you they ain't going to preach. I've never met a minister that told me they, they weren't going to preach. I never met a minister that told me they weren't going to uh, uh, share the gospel. I never met a minister that wasn't concerned about saving souls, that wasn't concerned about seeing people get delivered and healed and ministered to. I never seen a minister that wouldn't put themselves in a position to release what God gave them or to put a sermon together. You got to be a minister in that business. You got to be a minister in that entrepreneurial endeavor. If God then gave you a product and a service, you're a minister in the marketplace. And it's your job to preach that good news. It's your job to preach that gospel in that area and to let everybody know 
although I am in an overoccupied space, I'm going to find unoccupied spaces in this overoccupied space, and I'm going to occupy it until my blessings show up. I decree and declare that over your life today. I want you to get out there and win today. I want you to take what God has given to you today. I'm not even going to what I left off talking about yesterday because I just feel the unction for some of you to lean in today and make the decision that you'll die shot out behind you, that you're going to move into what God has anointed and assigned and appointed you to do. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been telling y'all ever since this pandemic started, ever since this quarantine started, we're over three months in, and now they're pushing a reset button, suggesting that because there's another wave, they're slowing things down, which means the markets are slowing down again, which means industries are slowing down again, which means there are going to be more casualties. There are going to be more companies that become casualties. There's going to be more churches that become a lot. Listen, a lot of companies, a lot of churches, large and small, a lot of individuals are not going to make it through another wave of what we've seen in the last three to four months. A lot of people ain't going to survive it. So by the time we get to the fourth quarter of this year, it's going to be a bloodbath in many circles. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Woo, glory. It's going to be a bloodbath in a lot of spaces that look like they're overoccupied right now. But if you enter into that space and you make the decision, I don't care how I look. I don't care if I come off desperate. Woo, thank you, Holy Ghost. I don't care if I come off thirsty. I don't, come, I don't care if I come off as if I'm just being greedy. I don't care if I come off as being too cocky, too arrogant, too egotistical. Who cares? The only people who care about how you coming off are people who are standing or sitting or laying on the sidelines making sense of why they're never able or willing to do what you are able and willing to do. It's time for you to be loud. It's time for you to be bold. It's time for you to step up and say, the business of me, the brand of me, the blessing of me, the product and the service of me has an anointing, has an assignment, and has an appointment for such a season, time, and moment as this. And it is, it is my responsibility to rise up and to take what God has deposited inside of me and, and give it to the world. And give it to the world and make those exchanges. Even if those exchanges don't produce an immediate profit, as long as those exchanges produce an immediate purpose. There are a lot of exchanges that you're going to make on a daily basis that ain't going to produce immediate profit. But it doesn't matter. You're not going to continue to make exchanges that create purpose. And at some point, those exchanges don't convert into profit. But the reason why we don't see our exchanges convert into enough profit because we're not making enough exchanges that convert into purpose. So you got to make exchanges. You got to make exchanges. You got to give the world the best of you. Some of you right now, you should be on social media 20 of the 24 hours a day, 24 of the 24 hours a day. And you scared. You, you tripping. You hiding behind a camera. You hiding behind a tablet. You got to get out there. You got to Ain't nobody going to know you if you don't do it. Ain't, no, ain't, no, ain't nobody going to expose you if you don't do it. And we around here praying, asking God to give us all this stuff. And God's like, I want to do it through you. I'm not going to do it for you. God ain't going to take your phone, click live like we on a live. God ain't going to click video and record for you. God ain't going to send no angel to do this for you. If you have value in what God has given to you, guess what? Give it to the world. 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 No matter how you got to give it to the world. No matter how you got to give it to the world. Because trust me, this world, this world, thank you, Holy Ghost. Woo, sheesh. Hear that about This world and this market that we're in and the systems and the infrastructures that have been built in this world and in these markets, they care nothing about what your apprehensions are. 
They ain't studying how uncomfortable you is, no matter how great of a person you are, no matter how great of a product you have. The greatest product is not winning. The greatest service is not winning. The greatest communicator is not winning. The greatest talent is not winning. The greatest gift and the greatest asset and the greatest individual is not winning. It's the one who's got the attention. It's the one who's willing to step up and say, listen, I don't mind being the loudest. I don't mind being the brightest. But with that, they're unwilling and unable to accept the hate that comes with it, the rejection that comes with it, the, the, the denies that come with it, the no's and the heat and the flat and the criticism. But when you have an end goal, when you know you are going somewhere, you ain't studying all that negativity that's coming against you. And this is one of the reasons why, for those of you that know you are financial breadwinners, you are the economic engines of your family, and you know that God has given you some dream and desire to experience freedom financially and economically on another level, whether you're in ministry or business, you got to put that strategic plan together. Those four pillars that I've been talking about, those four wealth factors that I've been talking about, you got to get them in. You got to learn that. You got to develop a muscle for that. You got to build your database up with all that information, all of that intelligence, all that content to match the revelation you have. You can't just be right here talking about God told me I'm going to do this. God showed me I'm going to be a millionaire. God told me my business is going to go around the world. God told me my ministry is going to be international. But you don't have the level of intelligence, the information, and the data to match that revelation. You're going nowhere fast. You got to take that revelation, connect it to intelligence, and when you connect it to intelligence, then you start putting it to practice on a daily basis, and you rinse and repeat that. You rinse and repeat that. You rinse and repeat that. In other words, you occupy till the blessings show up. I love y'all. I love y'all. I got to get back to work today. I got a lot on my plate. I'll see y'all tonight, 7 o'clock live. For those of you who need any assistance, for those of you that need any support, for those of you that need some direction, some insight on what you need to do or what type of strategic plan you need to put together with regard to your finances, with regard to your economic situation, with regard to entrepreneurship, business ownership, or even ministry leadership, I am available to serve you, especially those of you that are part of our tribe, because I want you to win. I want you to get what you need to get, but I also understand that revelation alone is not going to do it. You're going to have to have intelligence, information, and you're going to have to connect it to a daily practice. If you need anything, I want you to visit RamonPrestonUniversity.com. RamonPrestonUniversity.com. I keep telling y'all, I had a conversation with a few people just the other day. I was telling them this two years ago when I was in the process of building uh, our online training platform. I was giving them the financial gain. I was giving them the economic gain. I was giving them the entrepreneurial gain. I was giving them the business gain. And had they, had they listened, unfortunately, there's a few people I was talking to this week, had they listened to me two years ago, they would be in a totally different place right now. They wouldn't be worried about no money right now. They wouldn't be in no financial dilemma right now. They wouldn't be struggling at all right now. They'll probably be doing what I'm doing right now. But they did not, they did not take the revelation they received and connect it with intelligence and connect that intelligence and revelation with practice. I don't want that to be your portion because trust me, when this whole wave of this pandemic, of this quarantine, of this contraction, when this whole wave comes to an end, and the world as we then know it, and the markets as we will then know it, when they decide to push the reset button, there's going to be a bloodbath with entrepreneurship. There's going to be a bloodbath with business ownership. You're already starting to see it trickle in. There are a lot of churches that have closed. We just don't know they close. There are a lot of businesses that are closing. We're just seeing some of the biggest ones 
filed for bankruptcy and shut down and liquidate, but we ain't seen the beginning of what's getting ready to happen. That should not be your portion if you are a prophetic entrepreneur, if you are a prophetic business owner, if you are a prophetic ministry leader, the only reason why it will be your portion is because you keep listening to somebody like Prophet Ramon, but you ain't doing nothing with what you hearing. You still around here talking about God going to bless me. God going to do, God ain't finna do nothing for you and you ain't doing nothing for you because God ain't finna do it for you. He's going to do it through you. So if you need help, if you need direction, go to, if you don't go to my university platform, go somewhere. Figure out a, a platform that you can go to so that you can learn about financial literacy, so that you can learn about entrepreneurship and business ownership, so that you can learn about investing, so that you can put what I call those wealth factors in place. Put a plan together so that every day you can practice the strategic habits of getting you to where you know you're headed because you have not only gotten the intelligence, but you have done the math. So you understand it intellectually, but you also understand it mathematically. Trust me, 90% of the people that hear things that I'm talking about, they're not going to do it. I want you to be the 10%. I want you to be the one out of 10 and that should be your portion if you know that God has already planted something in you. So I make myself available to those of you that need it. Uh, but all I ask is that you go to our university or training platform. Uh, you can sign up for free. Once you sign up and sign in, just send me an email from your dashboard and let me know what exactly uh, are you doing. Uh, I've been asking for the past couple of weeks for you to add your phone number because a lot of times when I'm getting these emails about certain things with regard to the ministries or the businesses or the structures or the financial economics of somebody's uh, business or ministry or their life, uh, I want to call. I want to call to have a conversation so that we can prophetically flesh it out to give you uh, the, 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 the best wisdom and direction that, that we possibly can. But I love y'all. I want you to go out there and make some exchanges, even if it's not for an immediate profit. Make sure you make exchanges for an immediate purpose. I love you. I'm praying with you. Be amazing. And remember, Luke 19, 13 is your portion. You already have the blessing. You already anointed. You already assigned and appointed. God knows what he's doing in 2020 and why this, this pandemic is continuing to perpetuate because it's giving you and I as prophetic people another round, another wave, another opportunity to rise up and to lean in with everything we got so that we can get what we need and get to our prophesied place. I love y'all. Kiera, Kier, I love you too. Daughter Latika, love you. Thank you. I love y'all. Tammy Peak, I love you too. Chastity, I love you. I'll check my inbox. Check my inbox. Okay, I'll check it. Thank you. I love you. Virginia, I love you too. Mitchell, love you, girl. Hey, Nikki, I love you. I love y'all. I love y'all. Appreciate y'all. I want you to win today. Today, go out there and get that win. There's a win waiting for you today. Lula, I love you too, girl. Lean in, Chastity. That's it. Lean in. Let God use you today. Today, don't put off for tomorrow what you can execute today. There's a win waiting for you, but you're going to have to get out there. You're going to have to be bold. You're going to have to be bright. And don't try to make sense of what you're not comfortable with. When you're not used to certain things, you're not going to be comfortable with it. And your mind is going to try to trick you into not doing it because your mind is convincing you uh, that that is not that your your mind is convincing you that that it's not the right thing to do and the reason why your mind is tricking you to convince you of that because your mind is not used to doing it you have to build a mental muscle to be loud you have to build a mental muscle to be bright you got to build a, ment a mental muscle to be bold and to do it without regard of how you're coming off to people because they're going to always be people who get offended. They're going to always be people who critique and criticize you. They're going to always be people who don't understand you. They're just proving to you that they're not the ones you're called to. They're just proving to you that they ain't the ones that's going to support you. They just proving to you that they're not your clients and your customers. And you just speed on from that because they're going to be people who want what you have. I'm telling you, but you got to flesh through those ones who don't want what you have. And if you don't flesh through them, you're going you're gonna to get wore down. It's going to break you down. That's why you got to lean in hard and go ahead and get through that phase so you can get to the other side of it. Okay, Tammy Peek, I'll check to see what's going on. 
and get with you uh, after this live. Uh, Johansson West, I love you too. Lakeisha, love you. That's it, lean in. Mary Peoples, I love you too. Chanel Fields, love you. Love you too, uh, Lakeisha. Yes, I appreciate y'all. All right, y'all, I'll see y'all tonight, 7 o'clock, all you tribe members, and uh, what's today? Tuesday, uh, the 7th, so tomorrow we'll be back on around the 12 o'clock hour. Please, y'all, please, if you're not getting uh, the, the, the notifications, make sure you click all those buttons on the notifications because I'm not always able to come on right at 12 o'clock, but I try to get in as as as, as, as I can uh, on a on a on a on a timeline at least around the 12 or one one o'clock window uh daughter valicia i love you too girl i love you love y'all go out there and be amazing go out there and be amazing i'll see y'all tomorrow love you